Shall we start? Yes, sir. Okay. So, good evening, friends. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. You are all well and you had your lunch. Yes, sir. Okay. So, now we'll go into the extremist phase. We saw the moderate phase earlier in our classes that moderates had gaps. Moderates had lacuna, and the moderates, uh, we made an estimate of moderates, how moderates, uh, faction uh, leaders of the Congress, they were, uh, what you called, they wanted to be within the purview of the law, within the four walls of constitution. Later, we can see that moderates, they had uh, achievements. What was the achievements that they were able to uh, uh, make some criticism of the British imperialism, particularly economic critic. And they were able to bring in uh, their, uh, what you call activities in Congress. When every year they met, they took all the opinion and that opinion was made into a uh, resolution. And that past resolution is brought to the British uh, government. And because of this activities, initially the government was letting the British officials later on Dufferin got irked. He stopped British officials from participating in the Congress. And Congress leaders, initially, they were able to put some kind of a... Um, I, I'm not audible. Audible, sir. I think there is... If I'm not audible, means uh, there is some network issue in your side. If there is any issue, network means there is a um, network issue because I'm using fiber net. I think the, the bandwidth is very high in mind. I hope everybody is audible, no? Yes, sir. Oh, there's some disturbance. No, sir. Saurav, it is audible. Okay. Okay, so you can see that uh, they were able to pass on their ideas and agenda and that British government first victory is that Indian Council Act of 1892, which they were able to get a concession. And with this activity, they are now able to sow the seeds of uh, what we call nationalism in the people of India. Later, they also propagated the ideals of liberty equality and democracy because most of the moderate faction leaders were from where most of the moderate faction leaders were from the middle class intelligentsia that drawn from middle class intelligentsia I think there's some issue.
okay middle class intelligentsia were the first members of the congress and they formed the nucleus of congress in moderate phase are you able to see what i am writing yes sir okay so you can see they sowed the seeds who these moderate uh, phase leaders who are drawn majorly from the middle class intelligentsia so they were the pioneers and they sowed the seeds of their western education and this western education they were exposed to the western political thought so that what was the western very western political thought about what all the ideals that they were uh, in, imposed into the indian democracy in the early part of the national struggle they brought liberty then they brought equality then they brought democracy and all these were from where what influenced them what influenced them was the the western political thinkers particularly voltaire roseyu toreyu john milton tolstoy all these thinkers helped to shape the opinion popular opinion of these western educated people and these things are influenced into the indian uh, freedom struggle and now you can see that leaders like uh, uh, gopala krishna gokhale justice ranade they also uh, took uh, some initiatives particularly in social reforms because india was still facing the problem of social issues particularly in the with the respect to the women it was still women were subjugated what were the issues of women first thing is the the education of women then second thing is the the yeah. they wanted, yes any issue can you all unmute yes sir saurav yes sir any trouble no sir okay if you want to talk please open the mic and then you ask question if you want any clarification so okay so you can see what are the issues which plague the women one was education and also the uh, women who, who have been subjugation so they wanted to come out of the clutches so parda system then female infanticide then what is the issue then position of women in the society polygamy widow widowhood enforced widowhood and what else what else which uh, uh, plague the women sati okay sati but uh, sati slowly started to would be discouraged 
yes sati also is very important okay. anything else so all these areas even the, the national inheritance right ah that means inheritance, inheritance. yeah that means uh, father's property inheritance anything else inheritance are you able to see what i'm writing yes, yes sir. sir anything else so in these areas social reformers particularly palaganga dar tilak bg tilak and justice mahadev govind ranade they worked on these social reforms also because india was still plagued by these issues so you can see in the limitations of moderates what did moderates have limitation limitation is that limitations first thing is that moderates could not reach whom moderates they excluded which which class of people the general masses the general masses that means they were only like what urban people who are they sitting in the indian national congress second moderates did not believe in what did not believe in complete freedom or independence from whom the british from britain third what were the limitations of the um, moderate phase they were heavily inspired by what what kind of thinking pessimistic thinking uh okay pessimistic thinking were there but yes but what kind of uh, the mode of political thinking they were there, indian mode or western political thought western political thought sir they okay. were in the western mode of political thinking only the constitutional methods they were there. so they believed what they believed uh on belief on constitutional methods so these issues what the limitations the the uh, moderates had so particularly you can see uh, there were criticism uh, from lala rajpat rai lala rajpat rai who is among very tall leaders who are moderate turned extremist faction leader he said that congress doesn't understand about what what is begging and claiming political rights then bala gangadhar tilak he says that he he says what they criticize that congress is coming every year and they are they are croaking like a frog once in a year that is they are criticizing the congress sessions and what is the reaction to that their reaction is what hold and balaganga tilak says that the the um, the moderate faction leaders are like begging bowl they are begging so they were very much what he called criticism severely but you can see even the extremist face face starts the reason is that in 1903 who is the governor general of india in 1899 to 1905 who ruled the lord curzon lord curzon so lord curzon he brought in what his agenda was anti india similar to lord lytton or lord dufferin or lord lansdowne the agenda made by lord curzon was anti indian agenda in this anti indian agenda what did they do he brought in uh, many issues what all he brought 
he brought the uh, uh, universities act he brought what he brought the the draconian uh, law as he called the uh, what he called uh, the Co calcutta corporation act and also he brought the emergency act and and all these issues coupled with his agenda to bifurcate or partition bengal on the partition of bengal for what reason for good governance reason all these issues started the split in the uh, the rise of extremist faction so the methods adopted by the moderate faction leaders hartals signing campaign and uh, uh, what he called passing resolution and protest nothing stopped the british so as informed lord curzon partitions bengal and this partition of bengal was helped for the rise of the um, extremist phase so now we will go into the extremist phase so extremist phase starts from 1905 to 1918 and 1918 onwards starts what? Gandhian phase. Gandhian phase. So you can see that the extremist phase from 1905 to 1918, you can see that the militant nationalism took place from when? But militant nationalism started in 1905 or prior to that? Prior to that. So militant nationalism, you can say, started in 1890s, but but you'll say before starting of Congress from 1879. Why? Ramos's force. This Ramos's force was done by whom? By Vasudev Balvant Padke. And this the the issue was that during this time, 1876, what happened? The Great Famine. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Great Famine. And in this along coupled with what? Uh, uh, disease. So this led to what? Along with 1877 Darbar and actions of Lord Lytton all led to what? The, the extremism to start. Later in 1890s, you can see the Great Plague of India, Deccan, where from 1898, from 1898, you'll find what? The Deccan Plague. And world over, you have the Bubonic Plague. This Bubonic Plague claimed lakhs and lakhs, even crores of people life. And this led for what? Protest. And British rule was no longer progressive socially and culturally so it was what suppressing the spread of education the suppressing the technical and mass education all these things led to the the rise of extremism so prior to this rise of extremism you can see that the the moderate phase faction also leaders were responsible because of the political uh, activity so this political activity of moderates was called as political mendicancy. And this political mendicancy is what criticized by Tilak uh, Rala Rajpatrai and Bipin Chandrapal. So we have this Lal, Pal and Pal. Who are this? Lal means Lala Rajpatrai, Pal means Balaganga Tilak and Bipin Chandrapal. So these trio, we call it as what? The extremist trio. These three people. So they were very much criticizing the, the moderate faction leaders. So the group of young leaders within the Congress, they had a difference of opinion because they, did, they had a different ideology. What was the difference? Moderates wanted what constitutional means of uh, uh, whatever concession they want. And they never thought of any independence from the British Empire. 
they don't want any freedom but the extremist leader want violently they wanted the british to understand the grievances so what they want they wanted what they are were asking for swaraj what do you mean by swaraj self rule self rule or autonomy self rule or sui iuris self jurisdiction so this was the agenda but here there was no you know, freedom or thought of any independence from the british moderates that is why this ideological difference and the working model led to the rise of the extremist faction so what were the popular opinions of the moderates so bipin chandra pal called congress as a what begging institution then you can see lala rajpat rai he declared that the political rights cannot be achieved by an organization which couldn't distinguish between what between begging and claiming rights who said an lala organization rajpatrai. cannot achieve what political rights because they could not distinguish between begging and claiming rights who said lala rajpat rai then bipin chandra pal says that congress is a begging institution bala gangadhar tilak he also famously remarked about the moderates that we cannot achieve anything if we croak once in a year like frog and he was uh, what he called uh, uh, highlighting what congress sessions yes or no every year which is held in december and each december members will come and they will make some resolution and they will raise slogan after that there is no action on it and if this resolution is given to the uh, uh, to the british government what is the reaction what is the reaction very warm welcoming no sir hostile so it was cold and they never appreciated and they never looked into those issues so you can see that that ideology of extremist was different from that of moderates because extremist started taking pride in the glory of past so historical researches where their discoveries were made and also the aryan linkage in the uh, uh, indian genes as well as in the european relation brought lot of pride in the upper caste and the higher caste of northern india so they started to take pride and they wanted to equate themselves equally to the britishers so this also brought lot of pride in the uh, extremists the so social religious reform movement also led to the sense of cultural nationalism among the extremist faction leaders so you can see that so you can see that german philosopher max muller sir william jones asiatic society of bengal all led to installing what the pride in the pride in whom in the extremist faction leaders so bala gangadhar tilak he opened several educational institutions along with gopal ganesh agarkar who is gopal ganesh agarkar editor of who is gopal ganesh agarkar he is also a social reformer and he is the co-founder of institutions particularly along with bala gangadhar tilak he was instrumental in starting what pune new english school he started deccan education society and ferguson college later gopal ganesh agarkar served this ferguson college as what he served ferguson college as its principal 
So Bala Gangadhar Tilak never ever became the president of Congress. What about Gopala Krishna Gokhale? Did he become? Did Gokhale become INC president? Saurav? No, sir. Did Gokhale become president or not? No, sir. No. Bala Gangadhar Tilak became president or not? No, sir. No. Gokhale became president. Okay, Bala Gangadhar Tilak never became INC president. Sir. Okay, Gokhale became president. So, Bala Gangadhar Tilak was among the tallest leaders. He also moderate faction turned extremist leader. He never became the president and he's the first extremist leader. He was the first to reach the masses. What type of uh, uh, activities he do. He did Akhadas, Lati clubs and Shivaji festival and Ganesh festival. With these, he used, they used to erect pandals. In pandals, what they have to do? They were, they were installing the murti of Lord Ganesha and what happened? They will do puja and they will give people prasad and that people will be sitting and they'll be singing bhajans. And when the bhajans are sung, Bala Ganga Tilak will race to the podium and then he will start his uh, speeches, fairy speeches, and then they will raise the, the nationalist slogans. Okay. So similarly, in Shivaji Maharaj uh, festival in Maharashtra, Bala Ganga Tilak used to do the same thing. He used to uh, uh, sing the national uh, songs as well as raise nationalistic uh, slogans and also he'll speak about the ill effects of the British rule. In this way, Bala Ganga Tilak is first among the uh, extremist leaders to reach the masses. So there were a series of articles written by the extremist leaders, particularly Arvind Ghosh. So Arvind Ghosh and his brother Barindra Kumar Ghosh are also were very very famous extremists where his younger brother Barindra Kumar was hanged to death for their involvement in the terror activities during the British uh, government. So Arvind Ghosh wrote a series of articles criticizing the uh, what he called the moderate faction leaders in his uh, newspapers and articles. He wrote New Lamps for Old. What was the purpose of Arvind Ghosh criticizing? He criticized the national character of moderates because they were just coming uh, to the uh, Congress sessions. And in the Congress sessions, they are just uh, what you called having uh, what you called a quiet uh, time for the discussion. And after that, they make resolution. Uh, this resolution is taken to the British, but there is no action. So there is no connect with it. Uh, with the masses, with the rural, they are not taking the rural peasant issues. So these issues highlighted how moderate faction leaders fail to reach vast majority of Indians. So we can see the rise of extremist leaders in the Congress, they started to reach more people. So what was the causes for the rise of extremism? So extremism rose because Dada by Naroji, he started to speak about the ill effects of the British rule. So he made an assessment in his book, Poverty and Un-British Rule. Un-British Rule in India. With this, he was able to talk about how British was able to drain the wealth of India, how they took our resources, how they exploited the Indians, and they took all our wealth from India and they deposited in Britain. How Britain was making India bleed white. And his writings expose the real nature of the British rule in India. Ramesh Chandradat, who is also a top uh, moderate faction leader of the Congress, he also wrote the true nature of the land revenue policy. So he, in his book, in the economic history of India, 
economic history of India, he made a systematic assessment of the British from 1757, how British brought in a new kind of new land revenue policy and this non revenue policy was very much detrimental to the, the, the existence of the Indian farmers and systematically they made India poor by taking all its wealth and depositing in England. Surendranath Banerjee also started to criticize and he exposed the differences how Britishers have made India poor. And this, he also was able to discuss how the stated policy of the British in the official level and at the ground level, the reality, both are not matching. There is mismatch. There is, it is not penetrating. There is no action. And this, people came to know the real nature. And also how Surendranath Banerjee exposed how British are manipulating the Indian administration by manipulating the civil services in India. And also they were uh, not giving opportunities for Indians. They are bringing very, very harsh eligibility. And the policies of Lord Lytton reduced the age, maximum age, uh, to write the, you, uh, the ICS exam was 19, where Indians were in great advantage disadvantage and they have to go to London. So they were asking that simultaneous examination in London and India, it was not honored. So in this way, the extremist leaders got disillusioned by the rule of now start to fight the British. Yes, Rahul, anything you want? No, sir. Shubran, able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Excel says, able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, the moderate faction leaders, now, now they are now questioning, even the extremist faction leaders are questioning, what they are questioning? how Britishers are taking the Indian resources and they're misusing this, misusing our, our revenues. And they are taking what? Extravagant civil and military expenditure, but what they are spending for the Indians, particularly with respect to the, the health of Indians or education, other infrastructure, all these things started to question. And now what happened? They're putting irrational duties, price rise and food security. What they are doing? Nothing. Price rise is irrational. And also the Indian businessmen or handicrafts, they were not able to compete. And because of this, our agriculture suffered. How agriculture suffered? They made Indian economy into colonial economy. In colonial economy, what is supreme? The needs of the hungry industries in England and the England needs dictates Indian economy. So this, this was the biggest, what you call the drawback that led to the drain of resources. So Mahadev Govind Ranade Justice, he also made economic critics. He also brought what? The essays in Indian economy. Even Dada B. Naroji, when he was the Congress president in 1886, Congress session, Calcutta, Dada B. Naroji, he made very sarcastic remark. What did he spoke? Blessings of the... Blessings of what? Whose rule? British rule. Blessings of British rule. So when he spoke this, you can see he had touched the core of the issue which is facing. And Ramesh said that he also made what? Economic history of India. And he was able to make an assessment from 1757 onwards how the Britishers made India lead white. 
So in this way, slowly the extremist faction leaders were able to portray and convey and they were able to reach out to the masses. And now there is a change in the in the politics where now when people start to hear, now Britishers are finding what? Now Britishers are finding uh, now that challenge is now mounting because the RC that um, Dada Bin Aroji, Justice Mahadev Govind Ramande, all these critics and exposition of the theories, it exposed how British rule has been detrimental to the Indian interests. And this motivated the youth to join the freedom struggle and they wanted to oust. They wanted to oust whom? They wanted to throw out the British from India. And this agenda, what they had in the minds of the youth and others who were motivated to drive away the British, laid the foundation for what? For the extremist. For the extremist and also expose the ill nature of the British rule. So, Lord Curzon, when he was there as the Governor General, and from which year to which year, Lord Curzon? As Governor General? Viceroy? 19, 1899 to 1905. 1890 to 1905. Yes, sir. The six years of his rule or seven years of his rule was what anti Indian rule because he brought official secrets act and to this he was able to curtail the voice of the people, arrest people, and throw them out of the country. And without any bail, without any trial, they were killed or or they were using the iron what you call state, uh, what you call emergency powers. With this, it curbed the freedom of Indians. Not only that, through Railway Commission he was able to put a big curtain on the universities where he had destroyed the, the lives of the students by dismissing them from the degrees. And they were dismissed from the universities. And strict, uh, what he called, vigil was maintained on the universities that only government agenda. Other than that, there is, if anybody involves in anti-government or into freedom struggle, raising slogan or being participated, they will be will be given the harshest of punishment. Through this Universities Act of 1904, the British got greater control over the universities. And now the British also accusing the universities that they are producing political revolutionaries. So all these acts led to the the to the rise of extremism by Lord Karzam in the Indian National Movement. And 1903. Lord Curzon now keeps Delhi Darbar. So previously, Delhi Darbar was held in which year? In 1877. Who was the Governor General in the previous Delhi Darbar? Lord Lytton. Who? Lord Lytton. Lord Lytton. And you know that Lord Lytton's anti-Indian policies led to the rise of national movement. And you can see the policies of Lord Curzon led to the rise of what? The extremism in India. Now you can see that Delhi Darbar was happening in Delhi and capital of India was in Calcutta. So in 1903, and what was the background? Background was from 1898 onwards, thousands and crores of people died in famine as well as in plague, and nearly 10, 11 million people died in the Maharashtra region alone. So they took a huge toll of life. So on this background, they created Delhi Darbar. Earlier, Darbar was there in 1877. Similar situation was there from 1876 onwards, and they conferred the title of Kaiseri Hind and Queen Empress of India on, on Queen Victoria of England. In this way, people hated these the governor generals who went against the Indians. So the policies of Lord Lytton led to the nationalism and formation of Congress. The policies of Lord Curzon led to the rise of extremism in India. 
so what led to the rise of extrem uh, extremism or militant nationalism first thing is the 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 economic uh, critic of the indian national leaders and also the rethink second you can see the policies of lord lytton led to the rise of the extremism and also the rise of westernization in indians also led to the extremism so westernization means what indians were now using western clothing they were using the western food habits they got the western thought of education and they were working in western type of industries and the education was from the western universities all it shaped the the character it shaped the character of indians particularly the extremist faction the extremists also took pride in the ancient culture and indianization and reviving of culture also started to take place the writings of dayananda saraswati his call to go back to vedas and also vivekananda swami vivekananda and bakim chandra chaturpadhyas writings all enthused the extremist faction youth so what led to the rise of extremism in india one thing is the dissatisfaction of the congress where congress leaders uh, particularly the western people they were not able in a position to satisfy the needs of the indian people particularly their agenda is that what anti uh, indian agenda the extremists felt that the method adopted by the moderates and the opposed ideology is a non tune in with the people they wanted only constitutional means they want only legal means the aim of moderates is to get into the uh, the legislature into the council and from there they wanted to have a position so that aiming for position is what they are preaching loyalty to crown and they also said that that uh, the britishers are very peace loving people righteous people and they will give us institutions and the extremist faction leaders criticize the moderates saying that it is all political mendicancy so the political aim of the moderate faction leaders was what greater representation in the legislatures political activity was what every year without fail they will enter the the congress sessions and then they'll debate and they'll make some resolution and this resolution they'll take it to government what is the government reaction no reaction it was cold they never used to bother about it so never the demands were met in toto so moderates had issues they never really connected with the masses and they only the middle class intelligentsia was there urban class people were there they never contacted the rural people poor people who have been affected by this british rule so extremist leaders they started to speak about the back economic backwardness ill effects of the british rule how british racial superiority had destroyed the india's great past and how they have made india to a level of beggary and they brought it to poverty and we also started to talk about the economic history of india how india was once upon a time well developed and also they also said that in europe in other places these institutions have very much flourished but now in india now their people are dying out of hunger out of famine frequent famines so leaders like lal bal and pal they used to go to the masses and they had the real connect with the masses so what led to the extremism in, in india is the contemporary international influence so you can see movements in egypt persia turkey all the freedom movements it what these movements were were exposed to the indians and also indians in south africa particularly how white government was discriminating the the dark skin people as well as the indians who went from india to work in the europe as well as in africa and in americas they were taken by the british as indentured laborers now they are find, finding what you call difficulty to live in the country because those people settled indians who were 
brought as farm workers and indentured laborers as bonded laborers now they are very, very much humiliated by the english government in africa south africa so in 1905 japan defeated the mighty russia when japan repeated the mighty russia now they the japan became a small country became a great power and now the extremist leaders faction uh, people also got to hear this news and, and of japan defeating the russian and now they said that if japan can defeat the mighty russia we can also defeat the the british in this way extremists also rose in revolt against the british so what led to the rise of extremism in india partition of bengal so you can see lord karzan he wanted to division bengal what was the reason he want to break the indian national movement so the general public of india was that they don't don't want any division they wanted a united bengal so what was the stain what were the 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 stand taken by congress they wanted a united bengal so congress protested they wanted a united bengal they don't wanted any changes in the political boundaries of the bengal so now now there the demands whatever please placed by the congress and the moderate faction leaders they never accepted who british so as promised and as informed partition took place when partition took place moderate faction leaders were not successful in stopping the partition it highlighted the inefficiency of moderates despite moderates were putting a very good campaign they were in signature campaign they were protesting and they went too fast and still they lost the the agenda that britishers they bifurcated the bengal province so bifurcation of bengal led to the rise of extremism in india so the actions of lord curzon particularly the calcutta corporation act of 1899 lord curzon he made a definite purpose that that to reduce the the indians who are in a major decision in calcutta corporation he wanted to artificially create a majority so they reduced the number of elected indians and they brought nominated members and brought a majority through the calcutta corporation act so that they can make laws according to their uh, what he called according to the majority which they are possessing so indian universities act was also brought by lord curzon to curtail the freedom movement so this rail commission was appointed in 18 or 1902 so this commission was to look into the condition of universities and recommend the the measures but that was not the issue they wanted to reduce the number of people in the officials in the governing the, the university particularly in the syndicate they wanted more nominated members and they wanted to put a full stop to those students of the universities who are taking part in the freedom struggle so they wanted to create terror in the minds of indians that so that students should not protest against the ill effects of the british rule or nor uh, show their dissent uh, about the the uh, british rule so in this way the the extremists were in a disadvantaged position where british is trying to curtail the voices so what was done under the act so according to the the universities act of 1904 official representatives in the in the governing council they started to do what they started to uh, be reduced and now they were nominating more members from the british government so that they were having a majority so this majority will started to dictate the terms in the universities and control will be there so that political activities of the students and teachers they will be curtailing down and now affiliation of private colleges was made so much tough that the indians had to suffer because of the tougher rules brought by the universities uh, act so partition of bengal took place so partition of bengal as announced by lord curzon and 19 july 1905 
he the announcement was made that 16th October it will be partition as implemented and uh, announced the decision of Lord Curzon was was implemented 16th October 1905 they bifurcated the Bengal province so we can see Bengal province so Bengal province means which all territories in Bengal Saurav if you say Bengal, what is the Bengal province? It will be? Odisha, Bengal and Bihar. Bengal, East Bengal, Assam, Assam. Rajbongshi, West Bengal. Then you have the, the Bihar, Patna, Patna region, that is Bihar, where and then you have the Jharkhand tribal region. And then you will have the Odisha region. So you can see that in the East Bengal, who is majority? Muslims. And in the West Bengal, who is majority? Hindus. But what language East Bengal speaks? East Bengal speaks Bengali, Assamese, Rajbongshi and other tribal languages. West Bengal speaks what language? They speak Hindi. They speak Bhojpuri. They speak Bengali. They speak Odia. And also Adivasi tribal languages. Yes or no? West Bengal. Yes, sir. So now, Lord Cousin's idea is what? Divide them religiously divide them linguistically so that both will, will fight each other and, and they will not think about freedom. So this was the agenda of Lord, Lord Karzan. So Bengal was divided into two parts. Eastern part, Assam, Rajbongshi, Dekka, Chittagong, West Bengal, including the Calcutta region, the Bihar region and the Odisha region. So now you can see Eastern Bengal, Muslim majority with Dhaka capital. Western Bengal, you will have Hindu majority with Calcutta capital. So the reasons for partition are stated by Lord Curzon is what? Lord Curzon, so he had a large area. Bengal province is very big. We cannot maintain and there is lawlessness and, and crime increased in eastern parts of Bengal. Police is not able to maintain law and order. So, governor cannot administer such an area. Hence, partition is necessary. And what they say, good of the government, for the good governance and for administrative purpose, we are dividing it. But till now, we have seen the British side of the story. In the protects of good governance, law and order, they, they wanted to bifurcate. The real intention of the British is to break the Bengali nationalism. The Bengal province is the cradle of Indian nationalism where Indian freedom movement gained a lot of traction because Indian, uh, Indians, particularly in the Bengal province, there was unity among Hindus and Muslims. Is there unity among Hindus and Muslims only in 1905? Prior to the 1857 rebellion and even prior to the 18th century, in 1770s, you can see you have Pakistan Sanyasi uh, revolt, where there were also unity among Hindus and Muslims since olden times. And uh, you can see that Britishers were finding a tough time with this unity. So they wanted to break this Indians from the unity of religion. So they also started to accuse that the universities which they are setting, Hindus and Muslims are now uniting. So what was the agenda of government? Divide, but universities are, are uniting people. So that is why they brought this Universities Act. And also there is common thought why uh -huh. universities have become the places to enlighten the youth and the mind. When the Western political thought is uh, given to the students along with the economic uh, critic history of the Indian subcontinent with the ill effects of British rule, now youths are also very much a dissolution by the British rule and they are taking up the agenda. Now, what is the agenda of British? 
to break this national movement, divide them communally. Not only communally, they divide them linguistically. So partition of Bengal by the British government was just an eyewash. What was the agenda? What was the agenda? The agenda is that the reason they gave is good governance, law and order. But the real reason is to break the Bengali nationalism, the sentiments of the people, divide the Hindus and Muslims. This was the only agenda Lord Curzon has. Why? If, if you are going to leave these people, they will demand for constitutional reforms and they will, they will ask more and more concessions. So what to do is they divert the attention, then destroy them from within. This was the, the British mood of divide and rule. So what was the reaction to the partition? See, public wanted a united Bengal. Nationalist leaders, everybody, people, all of them wanted united Bengal. Now struggle started. Moderates were leading the struggle. Surendranath Banerjee was the leader of the movement in Bengal region. Bengal people gave a slogan that Surendranath Banerjee, surrender not Banerjee, surrender not to the evil policies of the British rule. Don't fall for the for the for the position. Don't fall for the authority. Surrender. Don't surrender the rights of Indians. In this way, Bengali people supported. Surendra Nath Banerjee not to surrender to the ill designs of the British and they asked them to continue the struggle in other places. So there was a big psychological impact when the bifurcation of East Bengal and West Bengal was there. So East Bengal, we can see Muslims were majority, Hindus were minority. And in the West Bengal, Hindus majority, Muslim minority. In East Bengal, what all languages spoken? Bengali, Assami, Rajbongshi language and other uh, what you call tribal languages. In West Bengal, what language? Bengali, uh, what you call Hindi, Bhojpuri, tribal languages, Adivasis and Odia language. So they pit one region religion against other religion and the same area they pit one linguistic community against other linguistic community. So you can see the minorities in each region, now they're feeling vulnerable. They have been suppressed, no opportunities, left representation. In this way, British started to give a narrative that what? That, um, uh, that minorities are being in disadvantaged position. So the Swadeshi movement is on the background of the, the division of the, the Bengal province. So Swadeshi movement was from 1903 to 1908. The real be reason behind the partition of Bengal is politically motivated by Lord Curzon, not for administrative purpose, because Bengal was the cradle of India's nationalism. And it is, it is where you have many middle class intelligentsia. It is where it was centers of revolt. Now they have to break this Indian national movement, this nerve center. So divide them communally, put Hindu against Muslim, Muslim against Hindu, then they will be chaos and then they will not think about freedom. So when partition of Bengal was done in 1905, why did this Swadeshi movement start in 1903? There are proposal to start Swadesh, the division of Bengal into two halves was taken in 1903 and made, and it became agenda of the Lord Curzon became public in 1903. That is why from 1903, Swadeshi and Baikot. Swadeshi and Baikot is the first mass movement in India. It started with these press campaigns and Surendranath Banerjee was the tallest leader of Congress who took the movement in Bengal and he wrote articles, pamphlets, he did dharnas and the people voiced out the concerns against the, the division. So the, there was no violence, no revolutionary instance during this period, Congress moderate leaders, they wanted still what? Go and bet, go constitutional means. And all the agendas, Tarnas did, reaction. What was the reaction? We will do petition, signature campaign. We'll send it to London. We will print uh, pamphlets. We'll write articles. And all these constitutional means failed. So now we can see the results of 
of the moderate faction Congress failed to keep Bengal united as the Lord Curzon envisioned. He divided Bengal. Despite all press campaigns, letters, efforts to mold public opinion, pamphlets, dharnas, hartal, no change was there in the official stance of the British government. Hence, moderate methods became ineffective. They could not stop the partition of the, the Bengal province. So, December 1903 to August 1905, moderate faction leaders continued the protest. Their constitutional means of achieving uh, the agenda of keeping Bengal united all failed. 19 July 1905, Lord Curzon makes a formal announcement of partition of Bengal. So they said, August, we will divide the Bengal. So 7th August 1905, the Congress held its protest meeting in Calcutta Town Hall. So during this meeting, formal announcement of Swadeshi movement was done. The resolution to boycott foreign goods was also passed. So when did Swadeshi and boycott movements came to force in 1903? It came, but officially in 7th August 1905, it was officially adopted by the Congress. Till then, it was done very individually in different places, but only from 7th August 1905, it was done on pan-India basis. So message of the Swaraj, it reverberated in different parts of the country. Because of whom? Because of the extremist faction leaders. They wanted to take this agenda of autonomy. So who took the message? The Tilak, Balaganga Tilak in Bombay and Pune, Lala Rajpatra in Punjab, V. Wo Chidambaran Pillai, the great freedom fighter of Madras, and Bipin Chandrapal, they took in lectures in different part of the country in highlighting the, 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 the ill rule of the British government and how they systematically destroyed the Indian economy. They made Indian poor and they are the ones who kept Indians in abject poverty. So people started to understand the ill effects of the British rule. So an estimate of ideology of the extremists. The extremists wanted to use this opportunity to take the message to the masses across country. For that, extremists wanted this, this movement to be pan-India. But moderates, what they did, they did not want this movement. Surendranath Banerjee was leading in Bengal, but moderate faction leaders said, no, 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 it should stay only in Bengal. So extremists said, no, pan-India. And we want autonomy, Swaraj, from the British government. Moderate said, no, 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 we should be within the purview of constitution. So this ideological divide came to the forefront. So in 1905, Congress session, in the Kasi, Panara session, Gopala Krishna Gokhale was elected as the Indian National Congress president. Okay, Saurav, Gokhale, yes, because, and which year? Saurav, 1905. 1905. So who did not become Indian National Congress president? Palunadar Tilak. Palunadar Tilak. E.G. Tilak. Okay, but Gokhale became, but it was on the eve of the division between moderates and extremists. Gokhale became the leader. So Gokhale did not allow uh, what he called to take up what uh, to the pan-India. But what he allowed is that he took up the Swadeshi and boycott movements. They passed resolution, but they put one uh, condition that it is only for Bengal. So now the division between moderates and extremists split. So extremists were unhappy with the actions of moderate leaders. So in 1906, we can see on 16th October 1905, this day was what, as informed by Lord Curzon, Bengal was divided. On the day when it was divided, people were mourning, they were fasting, they were wailing, they were singing Vande Mataram song. And now Vande Mataram song became the song of the moment. So Swadeshi movement song became Vande Mataram. So we can also say that Swadeshi movement is also called as 
Vande Matra movement. So Bande Matra movement, Vande Matra movement was the, the movement of the Swadeshi movement. They have asked in competitive exams. Swadeshi movement or Vande Matra movement. So on 16 October, the Bengalis, both the sides of East and West, they observed what? They were tying Raksha Bandhan, Raki Bandhan, and the Raki were tied from different people of the Hindu and Muslim community, communities of both the uh, sides of the Bengal and became symbol of unity. Did the British budge? They, they bifurcated irrespective of the, the uh, what you called the voices of people. They wanted united Bengal. So now Swadeshi movement started. Swadeshi, what is the program of Swadeshi movement? Uh, can we take a break for 10 minutes? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, sir. Take a break for 10 minutes. Please come back after 10 minutes. Then we'll go into the Swadeshi movement. And then we will talk about the, the, the split, Surat split, and the 1909 constitution uh, reforms called Government of India Act. Okay. So after 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, sir.
ராகுல் okay so now we'll go into the swadeshi movement what was the program that the moderate faction leaders and extremist faction leaders they followed they followed 
So, Swadeshi means what? What do you mean by Swadeshi? Using indigenous products. So, Thank which you. is which is belong which is made in India, Swadeshi, which is made in India, and all the 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 uh, what you call the raw materials plus the processing plus human endeavor. What do you mean by human endeavor? The the labor of that uh, which is put by the Indians in processing it and bringing into a value-added product. So all these terms is called Swadeshi products. And what do you mean by boycott? What do you mean by boycott? We refuse to buy certain things. Refuse to buy. Why? By the because it was not made in India. So what was not made in India? All foreign goods. Burning of foreign uh, goods was done in this moment. And picketing. What do you mean by picketing? Picketing is that people will go to these shops near to that. They will have placards. And they will say that this is not our product from made in India. Don't buy. And people will go and... Uh, what you call can uh, they will they will canvas to the uh, the potential buyers in that shop they will say that don't buy it is anti indian in this way the shopkeeper will lose his business in a peaceful way people will be protesting and that is called picketing so no foreign uh, foreign bangles and utensils see indian manufacturing and foreign bangles bangles is very integrable part of indian culture yes or no Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, even this bangle is also manufactured in, made in England means, what would have happened to the Indian industries? Can you imagine? Indian industries. What would have been the situation of Indian manufacturing industries? Would have, what would have been there? If bangle is also coming from England. Utensils, what do you mean by utensils? A crockery of foodware. We what we cook, we eat in the plate, spoons, utensils, everything, crockery. The, the everything comes from where? Cookware. All comes from England. Now, what happened to India? So, in this way, systematically, English had destroyed Indian manufacturing industries. So that is why Baikot and Swadeshi movement. They stop buying these foreign-made goods. And even washermen, dobies, what did the dobies do? They stopped washing all foreign clothes because they know what is Indian cloth, what is foreign cloth. So they never used the, 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 the so that the people who are using foreign clothes, they will not use it henceforth. So in this way, Swadeshi and Baikot women was, was very successful and Swadeshi and Baikot movement is the first mass movement in India. Which is the second mass movement? Home rule Jump. movement. Which will be coming next. Okay. Swadeshi and Baikot is the first mass movement in India. So, what were the, the in the Swadeshi movement, what they were doing? The leaders of the uh, extremist faction, particularly, you can see Ashwini Kumar Dutta. So he started Swadeshi Bandab Samiti in Barisal, in the East Bengal area, in Barisal. So what was the agenda in Swadeshi Bandhab Samiti? It was known for very famous Samitis. These people started to work for the for the people. Why they are working for the people? Because these people were neglected during the time of famine, during the time of plague, during the time of drought, during the time of floods. They were during the time of what you called epidemics. 
they went to the ground level. How people, many people, volunteers were there in the COVID, no? Yes or no? Volunteers in COVID. COVID-19 pandemic. Similarly, you can see pandemic was there in India in the, the first half of 19th century, in the early stages of 19th century, in the late 18th century, in, in uh, first half of 18th century, you can see pandemic was there. So these samitis bodies, they went and took the messages to the villages about boycotting the foreign goods and use Indian made goods. So because of this agenda, now Indian farmers, we have started to benefit. How? Because Indian farmers, uh, their produce were taken by, by whom? By the artisans, by the weavers and others. They started to make products and this weavers and those people who made fabric or any product, they started to use by Indian. And start to you uh, when when this use started, you can see slowly the villages also got benefited. So, what was the the program of Swadeshi movement? Melas and play. What do you mean by mela? Fair. 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 Means what? Village fairs. So village fairs. So you can see that. Annual village flare will be there, local festivals, particularly during Deepavali time or do we, during Navratri celebrations or do, during the, uh, what we call as uh, in Northeastern India, Bengal region, they call it as Bihu. So yes, this sir. Bihu area and also we call it in North India as uh, Makara Sankranti. That is a harv harvesting festival, man. Yeah, Makara Sankranti. And also South India, you have this biggest festival called Pongal. Pongal. So all these are interconnected. So during this vocal festival, they also sp spread this Swadeshi movement and boycott movement. And Tilak also organized during this plays and the dramas and, and they, they raised the nationalist slogans. And we wore Chidambaram Pillai. And he's celebrating his 150th birth anniversary. Definitely, there might be a question. He was one among the great freedom fighters. He, he in Tamil Nadu, he started to own because the, the Europeans mocked Indians that they don't have even a capacity to own a ship. So we were Chidambaram Pillai. He invested every of uh, inch of his uh, property, wealth, everything. He brought a steamer. So he is the first steamer, that is a ship which is runs on steam, on the uh, steam engine, was uh, uh, was owned by Vivo Chidambaram Pillai. And it was from Madras to Ceylon. So he was able to, after that, British has got annoyed. If Indians have started having ships, so what did they do they did to Vivo Chidambaram Pillai? They systematically destroyed his company, made it to loss. And this learned lawyer who became a national uh, uh, symbol for self-reliance was put to a lot of hardships Be because of, uh, of his uh, patriotism. What they did, they put uh, Chidambaram Pillai uh, in the Ghani. What do you mean by Ghani? Kachagani. What do you mean by that? Cold pressed oil. Have you seen this? You can, uh, yes, sir. You can see that there's a stone and in this stone, it will be put into a huge log of wood. Yes or no? And this yes, huge sir. log of wood will be tied to the bullocks. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And this bullocks will go round and round. And this gunny, what was there? The yoke which is put on two blacks, that yoke was put on Vivo Chidambaram Pillai alone. And he was made to put to hardship in extreme conditions. He used to take this yoke of two blacks, what two blacks will do. He did it for months together because of without food, without rest, without medicines. He was totally 
what you call harassed and his health deteriorated. So in this way, he was tortured to death. But unfortunately, government of India last year, Tamil Nadu government wanted to honor Chidambaram Pillai's contribution 158th birth anniversary and government says make in India, made in India. It is Vivo Chidambaram Pillai who popularized Swadeshi in Tamil Nadu and southern India. And the government of India who spoke about um, proudly about the skill in India, made in India, it was Chidambaram Pillai who took this very literally and government failed to uh, take his message of Swadeshi and make India great. And they did not let his float. And along with Rani Velu Nachiar, the queen of Shivaganga, who had sacrificed her life for the against the British rule. She is the first Indian queen along with Tipu Sultan, who are the first freedom fighters. They are not honored. And they were not given an opportunity for the float to be taken in the 75th anniversary of the Indian uh, uh, Indian uh, Republic. So you can see that the they, they, they contribution of, of uh, Vivo Chidambaram Pillai is undermined by the present day government. But he was very instrumental in taking this uh, message of Swadeshi to the masses. So Swadeshis, they used these melas placed to spread the political awareness among the masses. And this had wider reach. So it became the first organized mass movement in India, Swadeshi and Baikot. So self-reliance was the uh, or the or the talk of the of the Swadeshi. And and literally who brought this self-reliance, you can see that this council which came, the the, the moderate faction leaders as well as extremist faction leaders, they said we should go self-reliance. So the National Council of Education was formed under the, the nationalist leaders and they wanted to give national education, which is also giving the Indian thought, not only the Western education, they also wanted to fuse the Indianness into the education. And they wanted to promote the vernacular languages along with the Western language. Apart from education, large number of textile mills were set up, particularly in the Gujarat, Ahmedabad, Bombay, in the Bombay Presidency. So cultural nationalism started. You can see the Swadeshi movement is also known as Vande Mataram movement or the partition, boycott movement is called. Vande Mataram was the song of the the national movement in the first national uh, mass movement, they used to bind people. Rabindranath Tagore, he wrote the famous Amar Sonar Bangla, long live golden uh, Bangla uh, or Bengal. What was the song? Long live golden Bengal in the honor of United Bengal. And this song is what today? This was a nationalistic song and today, this song is reverberated where? West Bengal. Bangladesh. West Bengal. Bangladesh. It is Bangladesh. The national, it is the national anthem of Bangladesh. So, uh, in the world history, you can see Rabindranath Tagore. Okay. So, he, he is uh, having two his writings, his song. His national anthem, what he has proposed, is in two state, two countries, India and Bangladesh. It's a rare honor for a for a writer. His song has been taken as the national anthem of two nations. And India's uh, national anthem is in Hindi or in Bengali? In Sanskrit. Hmm? In Sanskrit. Sanskrit. No. India's national anthem, Janagana Mana, is in Bengali language. Okay. So Sorry. you can see the, the secularism as well as the national integration. Okay. Though 
Hindi is the official language along with English, two official languages of India. Our national anthem written by Rabindranath Tagore is in Bengali language. And this Bengali language is what we are singing all over India. Okay. Today, our government of India is going one language, one food habit, one culture, one. They wanted one. But India's strength is where? India's strength is in its cultural, pluralistic tradition, unity, Diver diversity. This is what we are taught. Okay. Don't go by the narrow paro paro parochial attitude of the, the Sangh Parivar or the Hindutva ideology. That is not a UPSC aspirants ideology. Okay. The ideology what which is proposed by the founding fathers of our nation. When you read the Constituent Assembly, you will understand that they wanted India to be what? Secular, democratic, socialistic as well as pluralistic tradition which respects every culture, language, tradition. And this unity in diversity is the strength of India. If India is going one nation, one, we are going on the lines of German Nazism. What happened to German Nazism? The hegemony, what they had? German language, German culture, German, everything, one people, one community. What happened? Finally, it ended in genocide. Yes or no? Yes, sir. They killed acts of Jews. Ah, not only they killed Jews, sir. They killed even Germans also. Nobody is speaking about Germans. Not only that, why we are not talking about fascists? Why are we not talking about the, the, the Bolshevik? Bolshevik are the greatest murderers in the world. Sure. In the name of, of uh, uh, what you call cultural nationalism, they killed more than 1.5 crores people. That means we are talking about 15 million people what were killed. Nazism killed only 4 to 5 million Jews. The massacre of Christians done by the Bolsheviks. Why people are not speaking? It is in the world history. 1917, what happened? Bolshevik revolution. So we can see that always it started with an ideology and it is killing. So as an aspirant of UPSC, always you should be proud in the unity and diversity. We should accept that cultural fact that India is the land of what? And land of religion, land of languages. If you bring one language, what will happen? India, today world statistics says that 1,500 languages in India, which is almost, almost 40 to 50 percent of the world languages in India, which is there in India itself, it is going to become extinguished. So if you are putting one language, where this 1500, then what, then what about the other cultural languages? Where will, will Tamil go? Where will Kannada go? Where will Odia go? Where will Malayalam go? Where will Telugu go? This is the language of what? Spoken by how many, how many crores people? Tell me, how many crore people? 8 crore Tamil, 7 crore Kannadigas, again 8 crore uh, Telugus, again 4 crore Malayalam, again 4 crore. How many crores is Odia population? 4 crores? 4 crores. Hmm. Then you put how much it is? 31 crores, sir. Ah, that means what? If these cultural languages, if you impose Hindi, where you will be these like, cultural which languages have thousands of years of history, where this will go. So India cannot go. So we should learn from the, the founding fathers. They desperately put Bengali language, not Sanskrit or Hindi. Our understanding as our yep. national anthem. National anthem is in Bengali language. Okay. Yep. So same Amar Sonar Bangla which is golden, long live, golden Bangla. Now is the national anthem of Bangladesh. And since Bangla was part of our Indian, Indian subcontinent and national movement, Rabindranath Tagore's The Swadeshi Song was taken as the national anthem. And this was also sung in the, the, the Swadeshi in Bangla. So Jagadish Chandra Bose, Prafula Ray, great readers from the Bengal region, 
also started to propagate the cultural heritage of India and indigenous researchers were made. In this way, you can see Swadeshi and boycott movements were very successful. Some facts for Pranings. So Swadeshi movement is the first organized mass movement in India. Okay. Then which is the second organized mass movement? Home rule movement. And which is the biggest and the greatest mass movements in India? Third mass movement. It is the Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhian era. Gandhian era politics is the greatest mass movement in the world which real awakening of India came and this started only after the partition of Bengal. This nationalism started to rise. But sir, during Gandhian era, yes? Uh, sir, the uh, present national, national anthem that is sung all around India is actually in Hindi. But the original song was written in Bengali. Later, it was, it was translated to Hindi by Tagore himself. So the yeah, but, but origin is Bengali only, no? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so Bengali, from Bengali it is then, Bengali is the major thing. Okay. So you can see that Mahatma Gandhi was the hero of the mass movement. He is one among the greatest politicians of the world who understood who, whose politics changed the world politics because he used a new type of politics is what? Non-violence. Yes or no? And Satyagraha. Holding to the truth. So these two were used by Gandhi and this was one among the biggest what he called change in the world politics where Indian freedom is different from what we perceive from other freedoms, where in the world history, many countries, they got freedom because of armed struggle. Here's a person who brings a new kind of politics without using arms, without the major use of arms, he using the emotions, he is using the people's passion, he is using what? Uh, in this moment, he is taking the pain People are taking the pain. They are fighting for the freedom. So this became the real awakening of India after the partition of Bengal. So what is the social base of Swadeshis? Who all participated in the movement? So some sections of Damindars, lower middle class, women, all came under the Swadeshi movement. So Swadeshi is the first organized mass movement. In this movement, you can see Muslims did not participate. Why? Why did Muslims did not participate? What was the reason that Islamic community did not participate in this movement? Why? Their participation in 1857. Why did not they participate in this uh, Swadeshi and Baikot movement? Because British politics. What was the British politics? Divide and rule. How did they divide? Linguistically, communally. So their agenda was what? They gave, gave uh, what they called the Bangla people, particularly Nawab of Dhaka and others were given what? Concessions. And they said that we will separate. You will have what? separate state and Muslims will have enjoy autonomy. They can have more jobs and more uh, development will happen. So in this way, Muslims offer that is why they make this agenda of what? Dividing the Bengali identity into what? They are divided into religion politics. So in this way, Muslims do not participate. And after this uh, what it called the 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 British government also pays rupees fourteen lakhs to the group of people to Muslim leaders. They form All India Muslim League. All India Muslim League. So this was also the part of what A I M L. So A I M L was 
ke come as a product of the british so you can see that britishers were very much did not want what another 1857 type of revolt and peasants also did not participate in this movement why the reason is that moderate faction leaders moderate faction leaders moderate faction moderate faction leaders they did not take up the issues of peasants they they did not bother about the issues which is there that is why they did not penetrate the masses okay so only after this partition of bengal we can see swadeshi and boycott movement gains momentum and that is how the the extremist faction takes this moment to where to the rural masses okay so british politics so now what did british do they in, why did british did not participate in this revolt muslims did not participate because of whom inducement of muslims by whom by the british, by the british government against whom against the against whom against hindus that means what divide them religiously and divide them linguistically so dhaka which is the capital of the west uh, eastern bengal it had muslim majority and what all the areas you have you have east bengal assam and rajbongshi or rajshahi dynasties king region so what all languages are spoken in the dhaka region or east bengal region you have bengali Yes, have Assami, and you have tribal languages, and you have Rajbongshi language. Yes or no? So yes. you can see that they 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 got what they were independent. Now they have more. So what did they depend on? In the West Bengal, Hindu majority, Muslim minority. They were speaking what language? They were speaking Bengali. They were speaking uh, what he called. uh bhojpuri they were speaking hindi they were speaking uh, chota nagpur tribal languages and also they were speaking odia language in the western part of this bengal province so you can see they not only divided religiously they also divided the bengal region linguistically so orissa after this orissa becomes the first linguistic state by the efforts of madhusudan babu they get the first state in 80 1936 correct no yes sir 1936 first state came the odia language state orissa was separated from orissa was separated from the the west bengal province so what was the causes for the fall of swadeshi movement and boycott movement so ban was imposed by the british public meetings were stopped processions press everything they put martial law was put students who are participating in this colleges they were dismissed from universities they were expelled from the colleges their education was stalled a fear was created and when people started to find moderate leaders were not in the in the what you called in the uh, 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 in, they did not want this to become a pan indian movement they wanted to keep it as a bengal movement so what happened the ideology between moderates and extremists did not match so in surat they became split prior to surat in 1906 dada bai naroji becomes the president of congress for the second time after 20 years who becomes president of congress in 1906 Dada by Naroji. This Dada by Naroji was president of Congress when earlier. Calcutta session in eighteen eighty six. Calcutta session. Now again after twenty years in nineteen o six, he becomes the president again. So the extremist faction leaders 
all presented their views and Radha B. Naroji accepted that, yes, we have to take this movement pan-India, not only uh, in India. So in 1906, Radha B. Naroji gave the, uh, what he called the, the permission to make a uh, make. But later, the other uh, leaders who are there, so this grand old man of India called Dada Binaroji, his idea was not taken by all the moderate faction leaders. So ideology between the moderates and extremists split. So Surat, when Congress session came, it split. Now, this split, what is happening in Congress, country was not aware. Why? Why was country not bothered what is happening in Congress? The reason the that there was no connect with masses. That means what? No mass politics. So mass politics comes only when Gandhian era comes. Hmm? So only when the mass politics happens, you can see that real country comes to aware about the uh, the British rule. So, Gandhian era is where you will get India as a nation. Till Gandhian era, India was not a nation. in It was a nation in making. Yes or no? India, yes, was, not, India was a... That is why we don't have what? A country called the India. It was who, who gave India to us. It was the Britishers. One good thing Britishers did was they united. Politically, they united the India. They might have done many wrongs. They might have taken what? Our wealth. They might have uh, done injustice. But the greatest gift that Britishers gave to India is what? India itself. The political boundaries of India is given by the British. That nobody can deny it. If Britishers were not there, do you think today India would have been India? Awesome. Hmm? Same feudalistic society. India would have been feudalistic society. India would have been some 30 to 40 countries. Who knows? Bigger than that, India would have been. Because it is British who gave India, who made an empire, and nothing but that empire who in inherited? Empire. Who inherited? British Empire. It was inherited by India only, no? Though they might have done the politics in what you called bifurcation of India into India and Pakistan, East Pakistan, West Pakistan, but major subcontinent India, they gave no. And Indians won. So where there was a country called India, where there was a nationality, it is because of this, the act of the British, which led to the rise of nationalism. And it was capitalized by whom? By the Indian National Congress and its founders and the leaders. And Gandhi becomes the real binding factor. Though Gandhi has a lot of what you call, we, we can criticize Gandhi, we can have opinions of Gandhi, we might dislike Gandhi. But without Gandhi and Nehru, there is no national struggle in India. The contribution by Gandhi, Nehru, Patel and uh, Ambedkar and even uh, the Subhas Chandra Bose and other these great fathers, founding fathers of the nation, cannot be undermined. We have weaknesses, but but India's problem in lies in the caste system. Still, this is the biggest curse that India has, and this is a five thousand year old injustice done by the the Aryan uh, society, which was which brought systematic uh, what you call classification of people, and that has induced what that created this divide and rule based on varnas classes and they brought this so still we are plagued by this issue only when a day comes when totally caste system is eradicated and and now uh, where every community every caste all enjoys the religious rights the liberty equality then only India will grow culturally to the highest zenith. Till when caste rules, when, when caste prejudices are there, when this injustice is still not given its due, uh, what you call justice, India will have to face a lot of problems. 
and I hope in near future our youth will take up the cause to eradicate totally and where India will be governed by love, peace and fraternity and acceptance and mutual understanding of everybody, then Indian society will become the greatest and it will teach other nations. So, okay. so you can see that country was not aware of these issues because there was no real connect. So what was the government reaction? Yes. They arrested the people. They even uh, not judged on the masses. Yeah, they yeah. No, no, no. That, that is what now we are saying. So you can see that the what was the issue? How? You can see prominent leaders, particularly Lala Rajputrai, Tilak, Vivo Chidambaram Pillai, all were arrested. They were put to a lot of torture. You can see Tilak was sent to which place? He was sent to Mandalay. Yes or no? Yes. Mandalay is where? It is in Burma. And they were put to six years rigorous imprisonment. Even Gandhi, who later stages, was put to imprisonment because of his health. In two years, he was sent back. So you can see Lati charge was done. And not only that, you can see people were, were uh, with iron hand, the British started to put uh, uh, what he called a blanket plan on everybody. He started to impose a lot of restriction. Martial law came and people were started to depose those leaders who are there. So this sending of people to other country, is it the same? Who was the first person to be deposed from Indian subcontinent by the British? Sir, the Bahadur Shahs of a second. No. Before everybody, the polygars, polygars of Tamil Nadu, particularly Madurai, Dindikkal, Theni, uh, uh, Tir Tirnelveli, all these polygars mean small kings. In that one king, in Tamil Nadu, particularly the kingdom of Shivaganga or Shivagangai. Shivagangai in near to Madurai kingdom. This king, the Mard, uh, uh, what you called Devar, who was the successor. Bengai. Of... Is it Bengai, sir? Yes, yes. So Devar was the first personality in 1780s uh, or 17 uh, in. Uh, in 1780s, it was Queen Queen Velunachiar. She is among the great queens. In all, today's history is very biased. They speak only about a queen called Lakshmi Bai. You have hundred year before Lakshmi Bai was Queen Velunachiar. She fought valiantly against the British and her 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 warlords, uh, her uh, what he called uh, her Divan and warlord Marudu brothers were hanged to death publicly by the British sacrifice and her successor never was taken. So he was the first person to be deposed later only because this was the first time Britishes. So it is called as administrative innovation by the British, this deposing. What was this? This was never in the world. It was only in India this had administrative depos uh, uh, innovation. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, is it that uh, the first exile? Yes, the yes, first yes. person to be exiled, like he was uh, from the Shivaganga dynasty or from uh, Shivaganga kingdom, that Vengai, like he was the son of Velunachir, no, sir? Yeah, he comes in the lineage of Velunachir only. So he is the first person to be deposed from, uh, from the Indian subcontinent. So later, the same technique British also use, where they also depose all the notorious criminals from the Americas as well as uh, the Britishers uh, in the UK. They all depose where? These English fellows, they all depose them to Australia. Okay, Australia and New Zealand. Which were there. So, but this administrative innovation started in India. Later, you can see all the criminals, all those fellows were all put to Australia. So that is why Australia is a continent which they discovered accidentally. 
and they Britishers colonized it and they put all those notorious fellows from England and erstwhile colony of British in America, they put in Australia. Okay, so you can see Tilak was also sent to Mandalay. Chidambaram Pillai was sent to the rigorous imprisonment in India and Lala Rajpat Rai. Later, Lala Rajpat Rai in the, in the uh, protest of the non-cooperation movement, we can see that he was lati charged and he was uh, he died there in the Punjab. So mass movement. Yes, yes, go ahead. Because of the injuries of the lati charge, uh, he, he died. Master. He died. That is why HSRA, Hindustan Socialist Republic Association, wanted to avenge his death. Who was there? But to get Rajguru, Sukhdev, and Bhagat Singh. Okay, they were also involved in what? The throwing of bomb in the Central Assembly. The murder of Saunders and uh, throwing bomb. Yeah. So, but the, their, their agenda was not to kill anybody, but to make the deaf ears hear about the cry of the Indian people. But later, you can see, they were also caught and they hanged to death. So, the mass movement, you can understand that you cannot take a movement uh, just like that. It will not peak. Because any movement has to have some break, then you have to start. Break and understand. Then only the Zenith will come. Okay. So that is why Gandhi is known for the greatest politician, mass movement leader in the world in history is Gandhi. Nobody can match the Gandhian politics. Gandhi is a is such a kind of personality. He knows when to switch on the motor of, of agitation. He knows when to switch it off. So that is also one weakness and strength also of mass movement that you cannot sustain it endlessly. So you need a short break. In this break of a movement, what you have to do? You have to check whether this movement is going in the right direction. So retrospection. And you have to plan your next step and you have to calculate every move. And also, you need to think backward as well as forward. Then only you will you will be successful in the next uh, step of your mass movement. So this mass movement needed a break so that so that the Indians will come more stronger. So the first mass movement ended, but it was very violent. British crushed it with its iron hand. So what are the positive outcomes of the Bicot and Swadeshi movement. So till now, no mass modern politics. Now, slowly, the awareness of ma ma mass politics is coming. Now, Swadeshi and Bicot movement is the first organized movement. Now, slowly, the people are it is reached and now they're challenging authority. But the greatest mass movement is Gandhian movement. So now, formation of Muslim League. So as you know that British wanted to divide India linguistically as well as religiously, the, the policy of divide and rule. Now they wanted to play the, the worst kind of politics is dividing them on the basis of religion. So why did British wanted the, the, the appeasement of Muslims to their side? They want to prevent Hindus and Muslims from uniting. Can you understand why? Because 1857 is a reminder for them. After 1857, Britishers became aware of things that don't make Hindus and Muslims unite. So slowly they started from 1860s by using Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Yes or no? They used them against anti-Congress agenda, anti-Indian agenda. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, Aligarh movement. Can you recall? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then, then they systematically played Indians against others to weaken this national movement. Hence, Swadeshi movement also was weakened by splitting the Congress from within. How? British politics, they started saying to Muslims that, see, Congress is a Hindu organization. Muslims have to create their own. You will not become a president. You will not get opportunity. You cannot carry your, uh, what you called, uh, yeah. your uh, works. So you can see that the the uh, your welfare measures, your education. So you sub create a separate organization. We'll pay you money. So what di they did on 1st October 1906, a delegation of the Muslims 
particularly after bifurcating the the uh, uh, east bengal and west bengal a delegation from the east bengal is coming led by sir aga khan they met then governor general viceroy minto so minto succeeded karzan so karzan uh, ended his term in 1905 from 1906 minto was the governor general viceroy so by 30th december all india muslim league was formed who are the founding leaders of muslim community sir aga khan sir aga khan the nawab of dakka salim ullah and mohsin ul mulk these are the prominent leaders of where from the east bengal area and they started this all india muslim league all india muslim league was a product of the britishers and the and their agenda to divide hindu and muslims what were the objectives of all india muslim league to remain loyal to the british and promote the uh, the interest of muslims so surat split happened in 1907 the real point of conflict came in banara session in 1905 they asked to take up what gopala krishna gokule when he presided over the uh, the the extremist faction asked to take this swadeshi and boycott movement pan india but gokule gave permission that only bengal so this conflict of jurisdiction whether bengal or pan india moderates and extremists had divergent views and it led to the what extremists they united to spread decided to spread to entire country opposing the moderates so in 1906 dada bhai naroji presided over now the conflict came between moderates and extremists now extremists were able to convince dada bhai naroji so they were able to get their demands what they demands of swadeshi accepted and regarding the spread of agenda extremist one and they were able to take it to pan india so majority of the congress leaders were moderate leaders they objected to this so this also came in surat session in surat session issue came who should be the leader so the the extremist faction posted lala rajput rai who is the tallest the extremist faction leader lala rajput rai should be the president but what happened majority of moderate said no he is not fit so when demands of extremists are not set what happened moderate leaders elect resh bihari ghosh and he became the congress president later we can see the same moderate faction uh, resh bihari ghosh he becomes what revolutionary terrorist yes or no he was a moderate leader but he became revolutionary terrorist resh bihari ghosh later but 1907 lala rajput rai did not become uh, president so surat split moderates and extremist split resh bihari ghosh becomes the the moderate faction for uh, he became the indian national congress president so what is the implication of surat split weakening of congress happened and also it weakened the swadeshi and boycott movement so when a movement is weakened who to take advantage british took advantage with iron hands they jailed people they they lati charge with with martial laws they put the people behind bars and also mass lati charges were done many people died extremist leaders like lala rajput rai the uh, balaganga thrak were all arrested and deported from india so in this way british was able to uh, what they called uh, put a iron curtain on the swadeshi and boycott movement so we will stop here uh, any doubts you have any questions Shall we stop here? Okay. Sir. Okay. So what we will do is that what we will do is that we will um, question discuss questions. I'll try to get uh, along with this whatever portions we have covered. We'll discuss, and then uh, you will also will get a good idea 
Okay, so that we can also proceed further. Tomorrow we'll see some uh, previous year questions also. Okay, sir. So see you tomorrow. Was... Yes. Excuse me. Uh, that moderate and extremist division. That division came after the Suraj session only, no? Yeah, Suraj session was the formal split, but ideologically they splitted in 1905 only. Oh, okay, but the ideologically they split uh, in. 1905, Gokhale's agenda, pan Beng only Bengal, pan India. They ideologically split. The physical split of both the faction happened in 1907. Surat split. Okay. So then Raj Bihari Bose was elected as the president. Yeah, yeah. Right, sir. Actually, Raj Bihari Bose to become what? Extremist and revolutionary terrorist in now coming years. You will see. But in the initial phase, he was he more was a moderate. 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 Even Bala Ganga Ratilak was also moderate. Later, he becomes the extremist. Now, Raj Bihari Bose becomes moderate turned revolutionary terrorist. Okay. Or revolutionary, we call. Might be he was not satisfied with what the British... With the, with the, with the actions of the moderate faction leaders. He got disillusioned. No. Okay, not because of the British, but because of... Is, uh, yeah, it, no, uh, it is also because of the Congress leaders as well as the actions of the British, where they killed many leaders, jailed them. They all that led both the actions of moderate faction leaders as well as the response to that by the British. It led to the revolutionary terrorism. Separately, we I will we will see revolutionary terrorism. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank from, you, sir. We'll come from Vasudev Balwan Padke to Chaperkar Brothers to Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, Anushilan Samiti to HSRA. Everything separately in coming, uh, maybe tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we'll see revolutionary terrorism separately. Then you'll understand. Yes, sir. Okay. So, see you yes, tomorrow. Sir. And okay. uh, we will discuss the questions and we'll discuss the revolutionary terrorism tomorrow. Same timing, no, sir? I hope so. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah.